So hi, um, I'm not able to do a live today because I have some appointments outside of the house. So I just wanted to take a few minutes to do a couple of other things along the lines of uh, basically doing covers for non-graphic artists. Since we're using PowerPoint, we have some ability to make some really cool looking covers, but if we don't have Photoshop, then sometimes it's a limitation and we turn down covers that we might want to use because we don't feel that we have the ability to, to use them the way that they're presented to us on, say, Pixabay. One of the things I've been sort of playing with is it works best with watercolor backgrounds, I think because uh, they're just sort of a mishmash of colors and so they look like a seamless image that I can then take and create the background for and I'll show you what I'm I'm talking about this weekend I worked on some covers and um, this is what I came out with so I have this cat I have this dog another dog you can see I'm kind of doing a theme here um, and I'm going to show you how I got these because all I did was take the background and then just repeat the background uh, in PowerPoint. Um, so here's that cat. Here's a cat that I'm going to try. Uh, here's this first cat here. Oops. So that cat is what I use to make this. Oh, maybe it's a different cat, but it's a similar kind of background. So all I did was take this off and then use his face. And then I went to Creative Fabrica and I got some funny cat phrases. So I don't even need to have a funny font because I just go here and I download the already made backgrounds. Now, when we're looking at doing keyword research, which of course is the most important thing to do before you start on any project, I went and I started looking at funny sayings because there's a huge amount of search, right? 49,000, but when I go to books on Amazon, I also see that there's 10,000 results, which means that I would have a really hard time even ranking in here. But if I go and I type in funny cat sayings, and you can just try this with any words that you want, of course, using the tools that I've shown you in the other keyword research videos, uh, keywords ev any, everywhere, gives me my Google search volume. Funny cat sayings has over a thousand searches a month. It's a lot less than 49,000. But there's also only 248 books in the competition versus 10,000 books. So this is actually something that I can compete in. And you can see that most of the covers that are here are very simply done. Black covers that just have some sort of funny saying on the, on the front, right? So that's really easy for me to compete with. Um, my tool is having a is thinking about rank showing me the ranks for the books but I know cat buttholes is pretty funny too um, but anyway it shows me that I certainly can compete in this category and there's a decent amount of search volume that I probably would sell at least a couple of books if I was able to rank in this category and at 248 books uh, if I make you know 20 books then I've already kind of conquered this category so all I did was go to Creative Fabrica and find some funny cat quotes. That's what I would do if I was going to compete in this niche. And then I would download those funny cat quotes. And then I would go find some images on Pixabay. And I would download those images. That's a dog. Um, and then I'm going to show you exactly what I did to get this book cover because most of the time these covers are too these uh, images are landscape and so they're too wide for me to really use so I go like oh darn what a pretty picture I sure wish I could use it 
So now what I've done is I make this image fairly big like this and I'm going to duplicate it. So uh, Command C and Command V or you can just take it and copy it uh, and Command C or Control C and then Command V or Command or Control V or just copy and you make a duplicate. So now this other one I'm going to move aside and this one here I'm going to make it this big but what I'm going to do is I'm going to crop it. So I go up to picture format and I go to crop and I'm going to crop out virtually the entire image. And I'm going to decide which side that I like the best. I might crop it this direction because I like this pink or I can crop it this way because all I want to do is crop it so that I have this little background right here without the image in it. And then I click off of it so I have this strip. Now if you've ever worked in Photoshop then you know that when you're making seamless paper all you really need is just this one strip to make your seamless paper. And so all I do is I take this paper and now I'm going to copy it again and paste it and I can actually make it and stretch it out just a little bit. I don't want it to be stretched too much because then it makes it look not that pretty. So de depending, I mean, you use your common sense when you're using the images that you have, right? And you'll decide what looks best. So that doesn't match, right? So all I'm going to do is take the second one and under arrange I'm going to go rotate and I'm going to flip it horizontal and then they match and you actually get kind of you know if you've ever heard of Rorschach who was a psychologist and he made these pattern images these look like little Rorschach paintings. And so now I have two of those together and I'm going to take that and then go to arrange again and I'm going to group it so now I have a bigger one. Now I'm going to pull that over and now I have about half my book cover already covered and now I'm going to go control C and control V again and now I'll have the second half of the book covered and now I'm going to group those two together and now I have an entire cover and then I'll just fix it to make sure it covers the whole thing and that there's no white space. Then I'm going to take this other one and bring that one to the front which was the original image that we started with and now because the background matches I can take this make it a little bit smaller and what I would do is I now make soft edges to sort of blend it in and now I have that pretty cover along with this cover that actually matches. And that is all that I've done to make these. I just took the edge and pulled it so that it matches the color that's part of this. This one I pulled it a little bit farther over because I thought it was kind of cool when it pulled across the, uh, the bend in the book like that. And the same one goes here. So that way I'm getting this speckled effect that I wouldn't normally be able to get. Let's do it one more time. I have the cat. I'm going to stretch it out uh, so that it's pretty close to the, as much size as I need. Um, I can stretch it out. I just want it to be bigger when I make the cut. And I'm going to decide if I want these green splashes or these pink splashes. And actually you can if you really want to do it, you could do both. Um, I mean, this is for you to play around with. So I'm just showing you the basic groundwork. You can also cut it so that you have it this way. I mean, any way that you want to do it, it really doesn't matter. All you want to do is have some portion of this background because now you've matched the main color of the background and the speckles that are in it. So if you cut it from the top, cut it from the bottom, cut it from the sides, it really doesn't matter. It's all your playground. Once I let this loose with you, it's all up to you to decide how you want to play with it. 
So all we're going to do is go and go to picture format and we're going to go to crop. And, oh, I need to make the copy. Sorry. Make my copy. Take this one. So I'm going to take this and crop this and go like that. I can actually get a bigger chunk until I hit the cat's tail. And now I'm going to move this over and out of my way. Make this bigger. I can pull it just a little bit before it starts getting too stretched out and then I'm going to go copy and paste again. I will rotate that. Whoops. Rotate that. So I have sort of that kind of pattern like there. Then I combine them into a group. Now again, I'm on a Mac, so your PC may look slightly different, but not very much. So your ribbon is pretty much all the same as mine on a Mac. So it really shouldn't stop you or hamper you in any way, shape, or form if your things are slightly in different places. So they're really all pretty much called exactly the same thing and they're almost all virtually all in the same exact place. So don't let the fact that I'm on a Mac trick you up, okay? Um, then I'm gonna go and copy that again. And now I will group those together. Bring this cat to the front. And what I'm normally going to do is crop this cat down because now I don't need all this extra image. I need the cat to be all here. I'm going to whack off most of this here because I really just want the focal point to be the kitty cat. And again, this is up to you to play and decide exactly what you want to do, right? So now I have the kitty cat. I can put it there, make sure I'm inside of my lines. I'll do my soft edges. And now I have it blended in there and now I can just slap uh, one of the funny statements on here or write whatever I want on the front cover of my book. I can move the cat down there. I can do really anything that I want because now I literally have a background that matches this image. And so I've overcome my inability to match these images across my cover and my front. And this makes my cover look a lot more professional and gives me the ability to use many of those images that oftentimes are just too big and that I've had to kind of overlook because they're landscape. So hopefully that has given you some ideas of some fun things to do with images that you get on Pixabay that you didn't think that you could use before. So have fun, go play, bye-bye. <laughs>